Breaking news, you can be even more kissable than you are right now with Lolo Lips by Barmaids. The makers of the exquisite Lolo Bar has one of the best lip balms available. Some lip balms can cause your skin to dry out if you stop using them or if you lose them. And let's face it, we all lose them. This product doesn't force you to reapply in order to maintain the healthy balanced levels of moisture ideal for beautiful lips. It comes in eight tasty flavors with no paraffins, no fillers, no dyes, just natural lip moisturizer that has everything your lips want and nothing they don't. I dare anyone to try it and not feel like an addict. Kiss me, Lolo. I'm in love. Hi, and welcome to Knitting Blooms. Today is Saturday, March 10th, and this is episode number 46. Welcome to the show. And welcome to Pajama Week. Thanks to Katie of Knitting on the Fly. <laughs> um, I am in my pajamas. I got up and I took a shower this morning. And I put on fresh clean pajamas. <laughs> but I am in my pajamas. And I have a Sammy on my lap right now because she tried to steal my chair. If you are ever come to my club at my house, you will know that these Ikea chairs... Um, Sammy loves to sit in them and if you are sitting in one and you happen to get up usually she has commandeered your chair within probably less than 10 seconds of you getting up <laughs> so this is driving me crazy I need to fix that <laughs> anyway she just got up now because she prefers to have the chair by herself what? That was Cody. He's over in the other Ikea chair over here. Anyway, so it is pajama week, and I am in my pajamas. And I kind of wish that I could stay in my pajamas all day. That's not going to happen. I have a busy day ahead of me. I was supposed to go with a friend, um, hi Jennifer, to um, a spinning guild's meeting this month and I was reminded I hear some clicking and it's oh it's the clock <laughs> anyway I was reminded last Sunday that we are throwing a 75th birthday party for Steve's aunt tonight totally forgot about it it's been planned for months and I just felt like I couldn't go to the Spinner's Flock meeting because I didn't know when we were going to get back. And the party starts at 5 and it's a surprise party so we got to get there before she does. And we are supposed to go maybe help set up. I don't know. I just, I just felt like I didn't want to be rushed. I didn't want to feel like they were rushed. So I said, I'm just not going to go this time. I'll go in May. So that was what I was planning on doing. The birthday party is tonight, so that's going to be most of the evening. Um, but my husband called me yesterday, Friday, uh, Thursday at work, and he says, what are you doing on Saturday? And I said, well, I'm recording, and then I'm supposed to do this and that. And he's like, well, you want to go to the Heritage Spinning and Weaving Shop with me? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, who would pass that up? <laughs> so, after I record, and I'm supposed to be hurrying because he wants to leave here at 9.30 to go up there so that we can get there when they open at 10 and we can get what we need and then come home. Which is fine, because then that leaves me part of the afternoon to get other stuff done. So, after I record here, I will be going to the yarn shop. And what could be more heaven than that? <laughs> so, yeah, today's going to be a busy day for me. Probably won't get much knitting done today. But I did get quite a bit of knitting done this week, but we'll talk about that in a minute, because there's a couple other things I want to mention before I go on. Um... I posted a thread in the group 
for an April knit along. And I post, it's a poll for, do you want to do a shawl, socks, or sweater? Right now, um, shawls are in the lead. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this thread open until next Saturday when I record. And then next Saturday when I record, I'll see what the running total, what the running total is on which, on everything. Right now, like I said, shawls are in the lead. If they stay in the lead, I'll go ahead and pick, um, probably three or four shawls. And then I'll start another poll on Saturday with those shawls that we would do as a knit along. So then, then we would choose which one of those we want to, want to do. And then I'll leave that poll open for a week and then we'll start the knit along on April 1st. And I probably will run that knit along for two months, April and May, um, only because even if it socks, I, I think they take m more than a month um, in some cases. So it depends on what you're working on. Like this month, I'm finding that my lofty goals of getting my March Madness, a mystery shawl, and seven knitting for hires completed in the month might be a little crazy, but we'll get to that. But I probably will run it for, for, for two months. I'll, I'll decide that but before we get to April 1st, so you know well ahead of time whether you're going to need to knit a shawl. And it will only be, it'll probably be a fingering weight shawl if we do a shawl um, with sock weight yarn. So it should be pretty easy. I have a new segment, which I don't really have segments like a lot of other ones, but um, this week I was um, friended by Patchworks by Deb, and whenever anybody friends me, I like to go and look at their projects. I'm just nosy that way. <laughs> I like to see what everybody is doing, and sometimes I'll look at Stash. Crystal, what are you doing over there? Crystal. She's over in my craft area. Getting into something. And four of the kitties are down here right now. <laughs> Come here. What are you doing? Yeah, get up here. Come on. Come here. Lay down. Okay, so what was I saying? Patchwork, Patchworks by Deb. So anyway, so I went and checked out all of her projects. And she, I saw that she did primarily color work. And I, I was looking at some of them and I commented and said that, you know, I really liked this pattern or this project or whatever that she had done. And uh, she wrote back and said, Thanks, I designed that pattern, and I'm like, oh, I didn't even realize that. So, the new segment is Featured Designers. And I was very excited about um, her, you know, patterns. They, they're they just absolutely incredible. I guess she said she's been doing them for a while, but she's just started writing them up more recently. So, she has quite a few patterns on her um, Ravelry page already. And they're just gorgeous. I mean, it's mostly hats and socks. She's just posted a, uh, a baby sweater with a matching hat. Um, and she, she, I think she's posted three more projects since I contacted her earlier this week. So what we're going to do this week, um, Deb has uh, offered to donate a uh, $5 worth of pattern, her, her hot... Uh, her hats are um, two dollars a piece. Her patterns and her socks are three sack patterns are three dollars a piece. So she's going to donate five dollars worth of patterns. So you could get a hat and some socks, or you can get two hats. Um, the new one, which is the baby sweater and the hat, is five dollars. So any combination up to five dollars. 
And then I'm going to do the same. So two lucky winners are going to win patterns from um, Patchworks by Deb. So I'm going to open up a thread. Please go and check out her patterns because I think that you'll love them. If you like color work at all, I think you'll love these hats. Uh, my favorite was the one with the um, kind of like the tree line with the sun setting in the, in the background. It, it's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, so that's, that's the, uh, the new, the new segment, the featured designer. So if you are a designer and you would like to be featured on the podcast, you can get in contact with me and, um, we could feature your, your patterns too. And I don't have any to show you cause I didn't print any out because you know, I'm going digital and guess what? iPad 3 comes out on Friday, and I've already pre-ordered mine, and it will be delivered to me at my office Friday. So I would imagine that Friday, not much work is going to be getting done. And I found out, this is a kicker. I thought my boss was going away the 22nd through the 27th. No, he's going away the 16th, so he will be gone on Friday, which is great because then I can just do what I want pretty much. But I thought he was going away next week or the following week. Anyway, I, I was hoping that I would only have like a week's time span with him in like a five week segment because then he goes away, then he go, comes back, then he goes away again, and then I go away. And I would have only seen him for like a week within a five week time span, but that's not happening now. That's all right. I'll live. So he's going to be gone next week, um, which means that when I get my iPad on Friday, I'm going to be happy. So everything's, everything's going digital. That's why I haven't printed out any of um, Deb's patterns, but go check them out. I'll have a link in the show notes and also a link on the thread where you can enter to win um, a pattern or two. I also went ahead and did the drawing for the barmaids, uh, $15 off your order. And uh, that was winner number 23. And that is Beagle Mom Knitter. And that is Angela from Chester, Virginia. So congratula congratulations, Angela. My mouth wants to, <laughs> wants to do one speed and my brain wants to do another. Uh, congratulations, Angela. I can't say it this morning. <laughs> Congratulations, Angela. Get in contact with me, and I will give you your coupon code for $15 off your order. And I have also opened up another thread for barmaids, again, um, for $15 off your order. So go on over and enter to win that. But if you don't win, you really she go to the site and buy some product anyway because I'm telling you so many people have contacted me and said oh my gosh I can't believe that I love this so much and they say I bought this because you you announced it and they've fallen in love with it as well so many people have contacted me to tell me that so I'm very glad to hear that I'm getting people to try this product because really it really does speak for itself all you have to do is try it once and you will be hooked for life. Probably not what you want to be, you know, you don't want to be hooked on it so that it's like you have to have it all the time. But I think that I think that you will. I think that you'll love it so much that you will want to try all their products. I am, um, I continue to use my body bar every day. I use it when I'm knitting. I use it when I'm spinning, when my fingers, my fingertips are dry and I'm trying to spin, I'm spinning the merino and uh, silk right now. And if my fingertips are dry, that, that fiber just does not flow through my fingertips very well. So I'm using it all the time. Try it. Even if you only go and buy samples to try the samples and smell the smells, I know you'll get hooked just by those little tiny samples. I know you will. So try it. So Angela, get in contact with me and I will get you that coupon code. Now, I think I'm going to do stash enhancement before I do 
my finished objects. Just because I want to be different today. It's pajama day. It's different. Um, stash enhancement. So you know that we're doing the March Madness Challenge where people committed to, to do the challenge. I went into their stash on Ravelry and I picked yarn for them to use during the challenge. And there's one, one yarn in particular that I was looking at that I picked for somebody and they've already posted a progress picture. And I just kept looking at this yarn and thinking, oh, it's so pretty. I must have some of that yarn. <laughs> and uh, that person, and I can't pronounce, I don't have any idea how to pronounce the Ravelry name, but it's T-I-A-M-O-E-92. And that's Lisa from Surrey Langley, Langley, Canada. And she had some indulgence yarn. And it's pink and green and beautiful and lovely and... Yeah. I didn't get that color though because I went I I just went in D-stash to see who had it, you know, what colors were available. Um and what kind of prices I was going to pay. Not that it really mattered, but I just I I would rather get somebody from D-stash if somebody's D-stash and something that I like. Why not buy it from them? Get a bit of a discount help somebody de-stash something. But this is what I got. It is purple and pink and green and white and a little bit of gray, a dark gray. Um, it kind of, yeah, it's a dark gray. So it is yummy. And it's so soft. It is, um, 75% extra fine merino wool and 25% nylon. And this states to use US 1 to 2. Now, I can tell you that this size yarn, I always use a 0. Now, maybe I'm a looser knitter. Maybe I'm getting to be a looser knitter than I thought I was. But I thought I was. No, I don't. I, I've never really been a tight knitter. I used to be that I could use the size needle that was called for. Not necessarily with socks because I like my sock fabric very dense. So I would use a size zero with this yarn, but it is lovely, and I am going to enjoy working with that. So that's my stash enhancement. That's it. I was very good this week. Very, very good. And I have nowhere to put this stuff, because this is full. Just have to move stuff around a little bit. So that's my stash enhancement. Um, let's, let's talk about finished objects and then we'll talk about podcaster sh shout outs. Finished objects. I finished the bias stole and I'm showing you a picture again because it really doesn't look like much. I did not put the fringe and I'm just going to hold it up in the bag because that's pretty much what it looks like. <laughs> Um, and it is done. I did not put the fringe on it. Sorry, Crystal. I did not put the fringe on it because the pattern calls for some ribbon. And I'm not sure. I meant to contact um, her and find out if she wanted ribbon included on it. Um, so I didn't do the fringe because I didn't know if she wanted to include the ribbon. And I thought it would be difficult to take the yarn out and add the ribbon after the fact. So I just left the excess yarn in the bag with it and I'm going to send it back with it. And then she can add the fringe um, however she chooses. So I finished that. That was fairly quick. I think I started it, I don't know, Tuesday? Maybe on Tuesday. And I finished it up on Sunday, I think. Yeah, I was Sunday, something like that. You can check my project page if you really are concerned about when I started and finished it. <laughs> but it, it, it went pretty quick. But I, I did um, focus a lot of my knitting time on this particular project because I knew it would go quick. It was only two skeins of about 100 and 
65 yards and we only I only used three-fourths of the second skein because you have to save that last ounce for the fringe so that went pretty quickly I also finished after last week when I mentioned I was going to frog it back I did frog it back I finished the um, dark side cowl and it looks like I need to trim that end just a little bit more um, I did finish the dark side cowl and there it is you can kind of see the pattern there in it and it is luscious I'm trying to see which this was my cast on. That's my bind off. I liked the bind off better to go at the bottom for me personally because it's a little bit stretchier. And then when you put it on, it would stretch out a little bit more. That's just my personal preference. But there it is. That one's done too. And um, actually I had enough to do another, a whole nother one of these for her. But she just decided that she only needed the one. So... That's what I did. <laughs> so that's all ready to go as well. And I don't think <clears throat> I didn't bring over the I didn't bring over the picture of that one. So two down and one, two, three, four, five, six more to go. <laughs> and the sixth one if it doesn't quite get done, it's not that big of a deal. Okay, so let's talk about my um, my knitting before we talk about the other knitting for hire. We will first talk about, let's talk about March Madness first. March Madness. You don't know how many times I changed my mind about what I was going to do with this yarn. I, um, I originally was going to do the Sarah shawl from Rain Lover Knits, and the yarn just did not lend itself to that project. So I decided I was going to do socks. Okay, socks, that's pretty easy. Well, last week I talked about doing a plain stockinette sock, a plain stockinette sock with a tiny cable that ran up the foot and up the leg. Laura Lineman, uh, she did something similar recently, and I really liked the look of it. And I thought she was going to write up a pattern, but I don't really need a pattern, but I still could have done that. But then I thought, I don't want to do that. I want to do something that has a little bit of texture. So I started searching for patterns with texture and I found a couple and both of them would work with the stitch pattern that I had now one of them and I can't remember what it was called I'll link it in the show notes it was like a crossover cable it was very simple it wasn't really it was kind of like a twisted stitch rather than a crossover cable um, you twist the two stitches and it just kind of let kind of created a lattice type of work well, I thought that's fine, but then well, I don't like to read directions, and I was using my own basic sock pattern, and I didn't want to do cuff down, and I didn't want to do um, a gusset, and I just wanted to look at the chart and use it and go. Well, there was like three chart patterns, and I didn't want to read the directions to find out why there were three chart patterns. I just wanted to do it, and I probably could have just used the leg chart pattern and just gone with it, but... Um, but then I just kept thinking, I don't know, it's, it, it was kind of confusing and I just decided I, w I didn't want something that I had to think about. So I decided to go with the Hermione Everyday Sock and I had already, um, done my toes on both feet and I had increased up to 74 stitches. And I started my patterning. 
and I did about an inch and found out too many stitches for this yarn. It's this this uh, Soulmate by Lorna's Laces is a lot stretchier than Shepherd Sock because I th I'm pretty sure I di didn't look back on my notes, but I'm pretty sure that I used um, clo 36 or 38 stitches on Shepherd Sock. Well. I did, like I said, about an inch, and um, it was just going to be too big. <clears throat> so I frogged, <clears throat> excuse me, I frogged it back to 30, actually it was 33 stitches because I had cast on with 11 and increased, so I had an odd number of stitches. So I, cat, I, I uh, frogged back to 33 stitches, and then I did a knit two together on the next round to decrease a stitch on each side. So here's what I have so far. I have two, two toes. Actually, this one I have to frog back because this one's still at 37 and you can see, <clears throat> you can kind of see the difference in size a little bit. See how much bigger that is? It's like, I mean, it's like a whole inch around my foot just about because it's almost a half an inch here. So here is the the Hermione Everyday Sock. It's such a simple, simple pattern. And I think it's going to be great. Sometimes I just want a simple pattern. So I love it. It's simple. I don't have to pay attention to a pattern. I can just knit. And I love these socks. I love this yarn. Um, it's very, it's very stretchy. It makes a very nice, um, fabric. Again, that's the front. Here's what the back looks like. It's nice and dense and it's still very stretchy. I don't want to stretch it too much because I don't want it to fall off the needles. It's very stretchy. So I can see why there is like I think when I added my project, there was like 1,940 projects. I can see why people have done that many socks. Because I will definitely tell you that this will be a, a pattern that I use for simple texture. If I just want to have simple texture, this is definitely the pattern to go with. But I love it. And like I said, this one has to be tinked back or I'll probably just take the needles out and rip it back to 33 stitches like I did the other one and um, go from there. But not much progress on these considering if I'm going to have them done by the end of the month. And I'm still not, this is what, this is the bit that I had that I have, that I tinked before that I need to re-knit so you can see how much I've done. I did, I had a lot more done. Anyway, maybe I'll get a chance to work on these today. I don't know. Today is going to be a busy, busy day. So that's the March Madness and the Hermione Everyday Sock. Um, like I said, I don't know if I'm going to get all these projects done this month. My main focus is that knitting for hire because I want to get it in the mail. At the very latest, um, before I leave for Knittopia, which will be... Um, I'd like to get in the mail by the, the 9th or the 10th. So let's talk about March Madness, or um, Mystery Shawl. This is the March Mystery Shawl with Knitting Like Crazy, so if you don't want to be spoiled, I don't have much done, so you won't be spoiled that much. This is the yarn I'm using, and it looks like I've got quite a mess here. Um, it is Volmiza. And I think it's in the Versace colorway. It's just a blue. And it's beautiful. And I have done 
chart A once, chart B once, chart A once again, and half of chart B again. And I'm supposed to have done them three times each. So you do chart A, chart B, chart A, chart B, chart A, chart B. Not that far along. I had hoped to work on this a little bit at work, um, but I've been really focused on the knitting for hire, and I'm going to get to the one knitting for hire that I've spent most of my time on this week, but I'll tell you about that in a little bit. So you will see that it looks pretty much like nothing. <laughs> um, and you can see my lifelines clearly in the bright blue. Um, I have been putting my lifelines in after the, uh, the end of the chart, the last row of the chart, I put my lifeline in just because that's my safety net. If I uh, have to rip back, I only have to rip back to the previous um, lifeline and it's the previous chart. So it's going quite well. I mentioned last week that I was having difficulty um, with the wrong side rows. And I've kind of figured all of that out and now it's going much quicker. And I'm enjoying the pattern. And it does go pretty quick. I did the second chart A, um, which I think had three repeats in it, one day, very quickly. I started chart the second chart B, and I did, I think I'm up to seven rows, and there's, I think it's 12 row chart. And I did that pretty quickly. But I just haven't pulled it out in a couple of days. Um, it just seemed like I, I don't like to pull something like this out unless I have a good chunk of time, an hour or two or more of time that I can focus on it because I don't like to get started in the middle and then have to stop. I, I prefer to be able to finish a whole chart, but obviously that didn't happen. And um, the, the stitch marker is where I was last week. So you can see I did do quite a number of rows, but I need, I really wanted to get through the first clue because the second clue got released yesterday. And it looks like it's only, I don't know, 12 to 15 rows. But at that point, you're like at 200 and some stitches. So you need to have shorter clues at that point. I'm hoping that I can put enough time into it between now and Friday to get this clue done, clue number one, and clue number two before the next clue comes out. We'll see. That's my goal. If I don't meet it, I'm not going to be too disappointed about it. And I am using my stitch markers that I've gotten from Lois. She, um, these, I think, came in my uh, Mardi Gras bag. I love these square little stitch markers. And you see, I forgot to take my stitch marker out, so it's caught in my lifeline down there. I try and remember to take my stitch marker out the row before, or at least the row that I'm, um, the row that I'm doing the, the um, lifeline in, I should put in a removable stitch marker. If I was using stitch markers all the way across, that's what I would do. I only use the stitch marker at the end because it reminds me, hey, these are all supposed to be knit stitches at the end. It's just kind of like a, a clues me in. I don't typically put stitch markers um, in between the repeats. I do like a stitch marker on the center and I just moved it up for you on the center stitch just to kind of give me a, a reference point. I mean, although I can look at this and see that's definitely the center spine. But but anyway, I love it so far. I love the Volmiza. I'm really enjoying using it. And I'm going to really enjoy when I get to pull out another skein of Volmiza to do Sarah's shawl. Because I will be starting that. I almost want to start it before Knittopia. But with everything else, with all the other knitting for hire... I just really feel like I need to focus on that so I can get that done and shipped before Knittopia. Oh, 
Um, I forgot to mention on the March Madness, there are already people who have finished. Finished! And there's more people than I realized. Because some of the people posted in the chatter thread saying, I finished my project, and they posted a picture. And then they posted in the official thread as well. But there are some people that just posted in the official thread and not the chatter thread. So until I went through and started looking at everything, I didn't realize there were so many people that had finished. So if it's not too much trouble, could you post in the chatter thread as well when you finish so that we can go and uh, take a look at your project in the either the finished object or go ahead and post a picture of your finished object in, your, in the chatter thread as well. And pro post po project pictures as well because... It's fun just to see the progress at house at the, as things are going along. So post your progress pictures there as well in the chatter thread. Okay, so let's talk about knitting for hire. I did start a new knitting for hire this week. And I'm going to show you the picture because oops, that's not the best picture. It's a beret. And here's another picture of it in white. Here's and here's the um I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see the 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 spiral on the top. But it is in black. And oops, we're losing a stitch here. And it is a DK weight yarn. And it is on size, I think I have it on size one. I think that's what I had to do to get the stitch gauge. But let me tell you, it is a dense, dense fabric. Dense. And I think it's supposed to be. Um, it really does look like that from the picture. It's very, it's very dense. But it is very hard on my hands. If this wasn't cashmere, oh no, I'm sorry, it's Angora. But if it wasn't Angora, it would be not that fun to work with. But it's so soft, and it's making me want to use work with it. It has taken quite a bit of time to do this little bit. I'm hoping that once I... Right now I'm still on increases, but I'm hoping once I get to decreases, it'll start feeling like it's going quicker. Um, yeah, but working with such a yarn with such a tight gauge, it is very hard on your hands. Uh, it's like knitting socks, like DK, it's DK weight on, on sock yarn, on sock needles. Um... It is a very lofty, lofty yarn if it were knit on um, larger needles. I don't know. It's a knitting for hire. I probably wouldn't do this project on my own only because it is so hard on my hands. But I just need to work through it. And it is called the Cashmere Beret. And... That's why I thought it was cashmere, but it is ang this particular yarn is Angora. It's actually Sublime Angora Merino. And I believe, let's see, 80% extra fine merino and 20% Angora. And they recommend a size 6 needle. And I'm using a size 1. And I think it's a 1.25. It might be a one point. Or, I mean, a 2.25. It might be a um, 2.5, but I don't know. Anyway, it's coming along. I've been plugging away with it. I actually took this with me to the vet's office on Tuesday because Mickey had to go to the vet again. We are not sure what's going on with him. We're hoping that it's only just like a thyroid issue. Um... They did some x-rays, and they didn't see anything unusual with the x-rays. Um, so, we did a thyroid test. So, we're waiting to hear back from that. We did the, um, there was two tests we could do. We could do the, the less 
accurate test that comes that's done overnight or we could do the extensive test that's more accurate um, that takes a week so we did the accurate test just to be sure I hate I hate doing tests only to find out that they might not be correct. You know, what's what's the point of that? What's the point in paying, you know, 60 or $70 on a test that you might find out that, well, we really need to do the other test too. When the other test is only like $30 more, just do the other test. It's, it's like sitting on pens and needles waiting for the answer, but I'd rather know for sure. However, this week, things have started to get better, so I don't know what it is. Maybe he just has issues with his intestinal problems. I don't, I don't know. We'll find out. And the last knitting for hire, um, I showed you this last week, and I said I wasn't going to show it again until I was done. This is the, um, I've been told it's called uh, Batomouche. And I don't know if I'm supposed to have, if it's supposed to be bato mouche. I don't know. However you say it. Anyway. And I wanted to talk about this because I do a lot of deadline knitting. And I like to calculate how long it's going to take me to do something. Because when somebody gives me a project and says, I need this done next week. And that's happened. Um... I need to know how much I need to accomplish every single day in order to make that happen. And this particular shawl is lace weight. It's, it's 880 yards approximately. And it, I, need, I want it to be done by the end of March. So I spend a lot of time calculating how much I have to accomplish in order to make that happen. So... What I have done um, in order to do that is I first I weighed my ball of yarn and I have a bunch of lifelines in here so it, it's all crunched up and everything. But you see, look how much I got done. This orange marker is actually, the green marker was my daily progress and then I started using the, um, the lifelines as my daily progress. But the orange marker is where I was last week. So I did quite a bit. But anyway, I weighed the ball of yarn before I did a row. Now granted, my rows are getting longer and are going to take up more yarn every single row. But I weighed the ball and then I knit a row. And then I weighed it again and found out approximately how much yardage I was using per row. And then I figured out how much... Uh, weight I had left in the balls that I had. Now I had two balls and I just finished the first ball and I started on the second ball um, yesterday. So I've done 400, approximately 440 yards already. Now I only have the other 440 to go. You're not supposed to be eating that crazy. Crystal's over here eating my hand spun. Um, so anyway, so I figured that at that point where I was, one yard was, I mean, sorry, one row was taking about, I forget how many grams it was. It was like 0.3 grams. I don't even know how I figured that out because I think my thing only goes by grams. I don't remember. Oh, yeah, I think, yeah, the my scale at work only has grams, but my scale at home has up to a tenth of a gram. I think that's right. Um... Because yesterday I was measuring it at work and it was giving me all kinds of weird numbers. Anyway, so yeah, my scale at home I think goes up, goes down to a tenth of a gram. So I figured that one row was three tenths of a gram. And in order to 
complete this in the time frame, I needed to do a minimum of two and a half grams a day. Now I've been, and I figured that that was approximately 10 rows. A little bit less, probably eight to nine rows, but just to be safe, I was doing 10. And I was getting to about three, three to four grams a day, which was great because now I'm a little bit ahead of schedule. And now I only have to do two, a little over two grams a day in order to complete it in time. So it kind of makes things a little easier because this is not the be the funnest project to work on. It's all garter stitch. It's lace. It has no life to it, you know, when you're looking at it like this. It's not the funnest thing to work on. So I work on it until I reach my, my minimum number of rows and I put it down and I work on something else. But this is the first project I pick up every day because I know that I need to get this if I don't dedicate the time to it, I'm not going to get this project done. So, um, yeah. So I've been doing approximately 10 rows a day. There was one day in there that I did a little bit more than 10 rows. As you can see, and I don't think, yeah, I think yesterday I did 10 rows. Um, this section right here, I don't know how many rows are in there, but it is a little bit bigger than the other sections. Um, only because... I think I had worked on this and I needed to do a couple more rows and um, and so I, I mostly do it at work but then I needed to do it a couple more rows at night and so I was watching podcasts and I just didn't feel like pulling out another project to to work on for 20 minutes or half hour until I went to bed so I just continued to work on this one and I think I got a couple extra rows in that in that night but it's coming along. And I know that if I continue to do my 10 rows, which won't be 10 rows after a couple more days, because it, like I said, it continues to increase. But if I continue to do my two to four grams of yarn every day, this project will get done when it needs to be done. And um, hopefully those other knitting for hires will get done as well. I do have two more sweaters. They are bulky weight sweaters and they're child sweaters. So those will go quickly. And I have one more beret hat with beads. And then I have my another hat, um, the hat that I did for my husband for Christmas with the um, fornicating reindeer. Um, I have to do that hat as well. And again, if that hat doesn't get get done before the end of the month it's not a big deal I can always do that after the beginning of the month um, because she's local and he can just drop it by to the hardware store so those are my whips a lot going on this week and I think that's the only reason I think I'm gonna be able to get these knitting for hires done is because they are pretty quick those berets are gonna be the hardest I think the berets and the um, and the Batamouche um, shawl because those are, they're labor intensive. Okie dokie. Um, I didn't talk about my, um, my knit keeper. Remember I told you I was going to go digital and I tried to do my mystery shawl on The phone well that didn't work so I pulled out my mr. my um chart keeper from nitpicks and I've been using this but now that I'm gonna have an iPad in six days crystal I won't need to use this although I'm sure that there's still gonna be some um, some need for it at some point or maybe I'll just gift it to somebody because I won't need it anymore because I will have my iPad and all of my projects my patterns will be on PDF and I will use that knit keeper crazy but I've been using this since then because it does work quite well um, I can stand it up I can put the little um, 
the little magnet on it and move the magnet as I need to move for my rows. It works. It works, works great. That's what I've been doing. But I have had to keep it away from my other electronics because I'm not so sure how magnets work with the phone and the iPad. And I wouldn't worry too much about the magnets that come with the thing. But I also keep this really heavy duty magnet that my husband has on the refrigerator. And you put these things on the refrigerator and you can't get them off. You have to slide them off the side because they are so strong. Um, but there was something that I must have needed this for. I must have had a, a thick pattern or something that I needed it. So I have it on here as well. So I've been trying to keep it away from my electronics because we don't want to mess up any electronics. What else do I have over here that I haven't shown you? Um, spinning. I have been working on my fluff <laughs> from Giggle Jelly. <laughs> and I do call it fluff because look at all the fluff. Lots and lots of fluff. Like, I don't even know what to put it. Look at that. It's like static clean. It's just all up there. Anyway, I've been working on this. I'm spinning this up for my mom. Um, and then I'm going to knit her some socks or shawl or both. Probably both. It's spinning up quite nicely. There's the bobbin. And there's the single. Quite, quite nicely. I love it. I might have to pick a colorway for myself and spin myself up some of this after I finish spinning this um, for her. But I do have 12 ounces. Yeah, 12 ounces of this that I'm going to spin up um, and then three ply it. That's going to take me some time because the last time I weighed this, now I have spun some more since I weighed this, but the last time I weighed it, I had not even spun an ounce yet. I, I would suspect that I've done an ounce by now, but, um, but I didn't at that point. But it is taking, taking some time because it is quite thin. And it will be, it still will be a light fingering when it's a three-ply. I still haven't quite figured out the whole um, wraps per inch and how much of a single will make the, you know, if you ply three singles, what it will make it into. This is still pretty thin. It's much thinner than the, um, I don't know if you can, you can see it, but it's much thinner than the, um, Polworth, the BFL Polworth that I just finished spinning, that I three plied, that ended up being um, un just under 600 yards for um, eight ounces. But it is, that's a lot thicker. This will be, I think I'm going to have a ton of this yarn for 12 ounces. But that's what I want because I'd like to do a nice big shawl. Um, and then some socks. And I think it'll be thick enough for um, for socks. I have a sample three ply that I tried out and I think it'll be it'll be a light a lightweight sock, but that's what I like. That's what I like my socks out of and I think my mom likes that too. Um, I know she's done some Lorna's laces before and she likes those socks. So I think it'll be perfect. So that's spinning. I haven't done anything more on the um, fat cat knits. I don't know why. I just I haven't put it back on the the sidekick, and I've just been busy with knitting for hire and the little bit of spinning that I have done this week. I've worked on that. So podcast shoutouts. This week I started watching. Actually, I think. One of them I, I watched last week, um, and that was Caffeinated Knitting, and that's done by Caffeinated Gert. Her name is Daniela. 
So go and check out that podcast. She has just got a, got started on her podcast. I think she's on episode three. And it's a nice podcast. She she does her podcast from, I think it's her sunroom. And she it's a nice yellow color. I really like that color. I told her that that was the color that I wanted to paint the spare bedroom. And my husband didn't like the color yellow for whatever reason. And he decided that we needed to paint it green. So we painted it green and now it looks like hospital green. And I hate it and want to repaint it. But... I did all the painting to paint it green against my wishes and I'm going to have to paint it to paint it yellow so I wasn't quite ready to just turn around and repaint it. I sh probably should have but I think we had to hurry up and paint it because his sister was coming to visit and we wanted to get it painted before she came and we didn't have enough time to totally repaint it again. But someday that spare bedroom will be yellow, a bright sunny yellow. It'll be much better than green. I thought the green was going to be fine, but no. Anyway, so check out her podcast. Um, I think she just started spinning as well, or maybe she was going to start to spin. It seems like so many people are starting to spin. A lot of the podcasters that are starting up um, either have never spun before or just learning to spin, which is great because if you're also a new spinner, um, you can learn a lot from them. And I do hope to do a, um, a drop spindle, a drop spindle tutorial, um, sometime soon. I don't know when. I can't, I don't know that I have a whole lot to cover, but I can cover my, I can go over my experiences and, you know, sometimes just hearing what other people do helps out. The second podcast that I started watching this week is The Knitting Den, and that's done by um, Knitting Den on Ravelry, and her name is Denise. Um, she is in Texas, and I think she's English, um, but she, she met her husband when he was in the military, and he was stationed over there, and then they got married and got re-stationed in Texas, I guess. So she just started, she posted one podcast, and then I think it was a couple days later she posted another one because the first one it took her almost a week to figure out the details of posting, and I totally understand where you're coming from because when you don't do that stuff, you don't know. You don't know how, how it works and how to get it posted, and sometimes it can be very frustrating. But she, So she's done two episodes. She may have done another one can't remember what day she said she was going to try and do her podcast, but she may have done another one. I'm like a week behind on podcasts, at least, because I'm pretty sure, I think I watched the Knit Girls podcast, and they post on Sunday usually. Oh, and I did watch um, Emily, but she also posted early. Emily from uh, What Just Watching, she posted early this week, so... I try to remember what day everybody posts, but anyway, I'm, I'm about a week behind. I need all day tomorrow with just podcasts and knitting, and I'll be good. I don't think that's going to happen, but one can wish. So those are my podcast shout-outs for this week. I do want to re, um, remind you of the charities um, this week. Again, uh, the three Irish girls are doing the the special colorway for Cher, and you can still pre-order that. I did pre-order mine this week, but I don't think it's going to be shipping until the beginning of April. So between now and then, I might order some more. Who knows? I did order two skeins, one for myself and one for a giveaway at some point. Um, I did order both in the Adorn sock yarn, but I might order another skein in worsted. I don't know. Also, Erin um, from Mommy Needs Yarn is doing the Autism Speak. Uh, Melissa Meliabella from the His and Hers podcast is doing the Susan G. Komen Walk. Sarah Rainlover from the Rainlover Knits podcast is doing the Avon Walk. And also the Cast On for Yen for Yarn. All those links will be in the show notes. And I hear my husband getting antsy upstairs because I believe it is almost 9.30 and he wants to go. 
So I'm going to have to go get dressed now because now I'm in my pajamas. And I can't go to the store in my pajamas. So you guys have a great week. Uh, thanks for getting in contact with me this week. Please feel free to get in contact with me um, again um, this coming week. Um, there is a couple people that I haven't gotten back to yet, but I do plan on trying to do that today and get those out of the way. Um, somebody had asked me about drop spindles and I didn't respond because I, I, I like, sometimes I don't respond right away because I want to make sure that I have time to, um, give a thorough response rather than just a quick response sometimes. So sometimes I put it off for a couple days just because I don't have the time at that moment. Um, so I do plan on responding to everybody and I like I said I just like to make sure I have enough time to respond with what I need to say rather than just a quick response sometimes. Anyway, hope you guys have a great week and I will talk to you next week. Hope your knitting blooms. Bye.